Hello there, Dustin Dolby here. Thanks for coming back to my channel. Uh, today I'm gonna run you through a really simple approach, my workflow for beauty product photography. And we're gonna take a really fundamental approach to get the soft, uh, subtle, and silky light, quite a bit of alliteration, to cascade across our Garnier Fructis. Can you believe it? But no, this look is quite prominent in advertising studio photography. So let's explore the parameters. And you know, this is just a base starting off point. You can customize this so much. I just threw it on a solid and shot this pretty much in camera, give or take a few little tricks and tweaks uh, that I'll dive into right now. So guys, I do love beauty products. Uh, I spent ungodly amounts of time, truth be told, looking at these in stores. And I think they're really elegant. And when we have them on the white plexiglass, we get that nice direct reflection, which invokes a real sense of class um, in our shoot. So let's just bring out a single strip light and we'll begin to build up this lighting workflow. And you can see where we're directed, where we're headed in a minute. So we have a nice simple uh, left highlight at 1 16th power. You can tell the shampoo, is that the shampoo? Yeah, that's the shampoo. I thought it was conditioner. Uh, you can tell it's glossy because we see the rectangle shape of our light directly reflecting. Now, when I lit up the old spice in a recent episode, I just brought out a reflector from here. And heck, I called it a day after that because the background stays relatively dark since the angle lights are angled away. Kind of looks like a scene from the mist because of the weird lighting artifacts, but the background does stay dark because of the angled away lights. And heck, that's a pretty good advertising look right there once you fix a few problems like maybe uh, the awkward light on the label. Today we're gonna take a much more symmetrical approach and I'm gonna turn on a second speed light with a strip box adapter. And we'll put this bad boy at uh, 1 16th power. It's fairly close, so it should be bright. Okay, and we see a nice symmetrical look. Now, a cut out strip light edge technique like this almost evokes uh, feelings of athleticism or you know, a brand like Nike or something like that. I'm not sure if it's appropriate for a look like this, but if I was gonna build this up, I would maybe, like check this out, that's just a piece of paper. I could bring in a simple fill just to give me some label detail to work with. And see, that was more flattering on the left text over here, Grow Strong. Is that Comic Sans? Dear heavens. No, that's not Comic Sans, false alarm. Uh, but you could reflect from different areas and get a lot of different interesting looks uh, from that perspective. But you know, we do have two strip boxes available to us, so we can carve out the shampoo and conditioner like that. If you only had one strip box available to you, which used to be the case personally a few days ago for me, you could just shoot with one. I'll just point this one away. And then move the same strip box over. It wouldn't even be a big deal. And you could cop them together so easily if you know what you're doing. A simple gradient in the middle, and there you go. So, you know, your power is really limitless uh, in the studio if you're comfortable with locking things down and fixing them in post in that regard. So now I'm just gonna bring in a bit of diffusion material to soften up the left line a bit. You know what, I'll actually keep this strip box off for now just so we can really analyze the left gradient. And I'll pump this guy up to one over two power just to make sure it has enough energy to get through the diffusion. And let's see how this changes the relationship between our flash and the conditioner. See at the bottom, we're getting a nice gradient from right to left. It looks pretty bright and extreme and it could move more towards the right. So a bit of tweaking. Maybe I'll start just by moving the strip box back a hair. And that should be a little more well-placed compositionally, hopefully. And you see my fingers peeking out there, but yeah, that's a pretty well-placed gradient. Notice it's pretty harsh on the right and then falls off to the left. Maybe I'll actually angle the strip box a bit outwards more to the left to make the subtle a bit, the gradient a bit more subtle rather. Okay, that's a really nice position. I think that looks really cool. Now we can definitely balance it out symmetrically uh, to make it look a bit more pleasing. So what I'll do right now is just turn on the second strip box. And you know what, why don't I go ahead and turn that up to one half power. And you know, this is a bit of a smaller strip box on the length. And to make up for that, we have a smaller diffusion panel, it's 150 centimeters. And you know, I'll just actually handhold this just to get an idea of what things are looking like. Okay, that looks pretty good off the get-go. We do have a nice soft light here at the left, and that carries on through the label onto the right. So all the text information looks actually really good. And you know, you kind of get lucky with the nice gradations that are going across the label, because look at the text. It looks almost like a gold metallic, which is what it is. So we're doing our job 
as product photographers to make that look really pleasing. And I'm certainly happy with the way that looks. Now guys, I'm always gonna make sure to turn off my lights at this point, just so we can put a simple mask together. And I just have a third flash here, and I'm just gonna put it at, I'm just totally guessing here, but 1 16th power. I'll shoot that at the background. And you'll see the diffusion material is actually getting in the way. So what I'll do is I'll fire that off again and I'll just hold the diffusion out of the way. And I kind of got in the way there. So third time's the charm. Beautiful. And we'll use that frame to get a pretty much perfect mask uh, so that on exposures like this, uh, we can begin to pretty much cut out the transparency and put in you know, whatever we want to put in. So I'll turn my flashes back on now. And what I can do is broadcast to you that mask applied. And you know, what I did in my original example is I just brought up a, you know, a simple solid that we can select from the brand color to bring in as our background. So why don't I fire off an exposure here? And we'll see when it comes up with that mask applied. Um, it's really nice just revealing to you what you can do in the studio uh, with a bit of know-how. And that mask is completely decided by the actual shape of the object itself with that backlight in mind. Okay, guys, I really hope you enjoyed another exciting episode of Workflow. I certainly enjoy these, and I'll be back with more soon. Thumb up the video is a cool way to help the channel, and check out all the links in the pinned description. Take care, guys.